Well, good morning. I'd like to welcome everybody to Nanog 16 and uh, the lovely Nanog t-shirts, thanks to Dave and others. My name is Craig Labovitz. I'm from the University of Michigan and Merit Network, along with the along with you, <coughs> University of Oregon and Vario, we're the hosts of this Nanog 16. And I'd like to do a few things this morning. One is provide some observations. Two, we'll invite the local host to come up and talk about the network and uh, how the t-shirts were made and other uh, introduced to the local area. Thirdly, I'll provide some vital statistics about the current NANOG and NANOGs. And lastly, this morning, before we get into the main talks, we'll have the NANOG FAQ, FAQ. So first, some observations. These t-shirts, as Randy has told me several times, are very special. These are handmade by people off the grid. So I didn't, I didn't know what off the grid meant either until I asked Randy and Pam. And apparently they live off in the woods, deep in the woods of the Oregon Mountains. Or, or again, or, Oregon. Oregon. Thank you. Oregon. Uh, they don't have power. They do, however, accept credit card numbers, which I find interesting. <laughs> OK, I'm kidding. Apparently, they don't accept credit card numbers either, which actually caused quite a few problems for us. But all these are handmade, each individual. So uh, you know, hand-dyed by uh, people off the grid. The second is Eugene. And I have to admit, this has been, I've just been here for two days now, and I've had a great time. I went uh, for a walk yesterday morning, hoping to find a drugstore. And I was fascinated that Eugene doesn't have any drugstore within a mile radius of the hotel. But there are, however, two tattoo parlors, both open Sunday morning in a place called Lola the Piercing Goddess. <laughs> and she is also open on Sunday mornings. And the answer to all of your questions is no and yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one, other, one other observation. This is an incredibly beautiful country. Uh, Pam, Cecil, and I took a drive along the coast as we came in from Portland. And there's big waves and big mountains and, and so on. And it was so nice, so beautiful, so just awe-inspiring that we decided to drive back last night. Uh, one observation I have about driving the beach, however, is it's not quite as awe-inspiring at night. <laughs> So we dragged a bunch of other people along with us, and we were telling them, oh, this beach is so great. We left Eugene about 7.30. By the time we got to the coast, uh, Florence, I think? Yeah, yeah it, it pretty much looks a lot like Michigan. It's this. <laughs> so if you are going to go to the beach, the other observation I have is you probably want to go during the day. It's a lot more impressive. La uh, also have an observation. This will be the last observation I have, or maybe I'll delay it as Randy's trying to get some slides up. Oh, you all set? Uh, the last observation I have is about the local host. Normally, I can't come in on Saturdays and have in my t-shirt and expecting to put down duct tape and, and start to at least thinking about putting the network together. On Saturday, I came in, then not only were the machines all set up, but the network was online. And Randy came and told me that they were all now being monitored by the Vario knock. I was kind of tempted to turn some off to see what would happen. <laughs> Uh, but just, to, you know, it's incredible. It makes it a, uh, just an incredible setup here. Uh, I think Randy will, and in just a minute or so, we'll speak about the network. But in addition to just the technical uh, facilities and the technical setup, the enthusiasm of Randy and all of the students and Lucy uh, on the local host has just been infectious. So it's really nice to be back at a university. It's a lot of fun being here, and it's a lot of fun just the atmosphere of the place, and Eugene's a great place. With that said, I turn over the... <coughs> you can FTP. You can FTP from here if you want. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, I'll turn over the light over here.
Place he said, Randy, the person and the person in charge of the people who are responsible and the people who actually did all the work is Lucy Lynch, who's in the back of the room. Yeah. I didn't do anything but um, come and keep help David keep the Almond Brothers going. Um, this is the net. Um, dip, dip, dip. That's the right thing in here. Um, we're in here, terminal room, external connectivity. Um, US West wouldn't give us a DS3, so you've got six IMUX T1s. Um, pardon? What's broken? Well, that's okay. Have some more coffee and go match it. Um, if you're sitting in here, Oh, I blew it. I didn't pull away his foil. Um, these two tables right here, the front two tables, are um, going through something <laughs> called power port. Public port. Public port, which does something or other. And um, <laughs> there'll be a beer in here. But it's off the grid? No, it is not handmade by hippies off the grid. It's handmade <laughs> by, by a bunch of suits who couldn't even tell me what it did. <laughs> Okay, um, to be noted that most of you essentially have three separate things. You've got the wireless LAN, you've got the uh, wired LAN, and you've got multicast. We've learned at many ITS and a few nanogs that uh, you don't mix multicast. I'm told that when you stand from the screen, you appear totally black. Um, when I stand in front of the screen, I appear totally black. You're just a silhouette. Okay, that sounds good. I'll stay right here. <laughs> um, External connectivity, um, here we are, we're coming in from Nanog, dropping to uh, Vario's backbone pop in Eugene, hitting the Vario backbones, cross-connected to the Oregon Exchange. UO has a gigapop down here with uh, external connectivity. I think Denver's coming up today or something this week. There's U of O, there's the Oregon um, Educational Network. And there's an exchange point here in Eugene, run by the University of Oregon, and a bunch of us are all on it. Okay, I'm going to finish quickly. You said, David? Okay. Cool. Okay, I'm going to save some time, and I'm going to just run us through quickly the normal lies you hear here. So just save a lot of time during the next two days. Um, the first one, of course, is the most classic. There are no packets dropped across the exchanges. <laughs> There goes another pig now. <laughs> ATM exchange points have been proven to scale well. <laughs> oh. Multicast is easy to configure. <laughs> I have a t-shirt that says that. It's also very easy to debug. <laughs> X is a tier one provider for many values of X. <laughs> and just to make it clear, a tier one provider does not pay anybody else for routes. Hosting Nanog is easy, and it's cost-free. I don't know, University of Oregon has um, um, between ten dollars and $20,000 into this. U.S. West. It's easy to get IPv4 address space, yep. But don't worry, because... <laughs> <laughs> Your peer provider's knots are there for you on a 7 by 24 basis. To help you coordinate with your knot, it's easy, it's trivial. Just ask Sean Donnellan. <laughs> the SWIFTs are all current. <laughs> That's why the database is so good. <laughs> your friends. <laughs> Yep, just wait for Windows 2000. 
Uh, and just to make sure you understand how hard it was to get this all together, here's our fearless leader. <laughs> Lucy, Lucy Lynn, no, seriously, Lucy and the U of O crew and, and Lane Community College, etc., have been amazing, fun, professional. Um, um, I like doing setups. I don't like doing klutzy setups, and I usually avoid them. This has been ace. This has been fun. And, and hey, they even brought in newer and big, bigger speakers when it was needed. And that's it. That's a hard act to follow. Um, I already killed one laptop up here. I'm hoping not to kill another one. Uh, so this is some earlier version of my slides because I kind of worked on that. Okay, I'm Dave, and um, I'm sort of doing the welcome to Nanod thing, although Randy, Randy did a pretty good job here. Um, I, uh, I, had been look, I had been trying to think about what to talk about, and I knew Randy was going to cover all these technical points plus that other good stuff he just he just covered. So rather than kind of cover anything technical, I thought I might try uh, telling you the top ten things I really love about Eugene since you're all here. And um, since you had to come here, maybe the top ten things I disliked, although this thing was a little harder to come by because I kind of like living here. And then I wanted to give some acknowledgments and then get out. So let's do that. So these aren't in any order, but has anybody gone down to the UL campus yet? Walk down that way east or whatever direction that is, about a mile or so. Check it out. It's a beautiful place. I really love it. Um, and it's a good day to be down there. It's nice weather, that sort of thing. Uh, anybody been out to the Cascades? Anybody gone east? Where'd you go? Oh, I know Tom went up to Sahaley, right, Tom? Where are you? Tom, yeah, you went up to Sahaley, right? There's some falls a couple miles from here, 20 miles, 30 miles or so. Um, I advise that. It's really nice out there. Rivers, there's two rivers that run through town, the Willamette and the McKinsey. The McKinsey's a little bit on the outside. <coughs> Anybody seen either of those? There's a footbridge over, there, there are a bunch of footbridges over here. Um, I really advise going looking at that, especially with good weather like we have today. It's nice out there. Spencer Butte, anybody been up there? It's the big butte to the south of town? Easily climbed yesterday. Oh yeah, Hees. Hees has been up there, right. But he, you went up to Willamette, right? Go up to Fox Hollow side if you have an opportunity. If you don't know how to get there, ask me. He's, he's went up the Willamette, right? Yeah. Uh, spring and fall. This happens to be spring. Fall is really great here, too. I mean, this is great. We're having good weather, too. It's not raining. We like that. Air and water quality. I don't know if anybody noticed, but uh, the air quality hasn't been that good yesterday, but the water quality here is really great. We have the best water out of the tap of any place I've been, and I've been a few places now, unfortunately. Uh, uh, there's a park over by the river called... Um, called Alton ba Baker Park and there's a really nice amphitheater over there where you can see like all kinds of nice music in the summertime. I love that out there. I uh, really advise you to just go and looking at it. There's some structure in the bike trails over there. Oh, bike trails. There's a lot of nice bike trails in town going around the river and through the parks all over the place. If you like biking, it's nice. Oh, there's a lot of deadheads in town. I really like that. <laughs> Although I got dinged because I wanted the deadhead symbol on the shirt, but somebody said that that could be religiously offensive, and I couldn't understand it. So I, anyway, uh, I have a friend, um, this guy. You can look on his webpage. I thought maybe you might like to look at this, but he kind of represents um, the fact that there's a lot of '60s icons hanging out in Eugene <coughs> very quietly. This guy's a pretty interesting person, and uh, it represents sort of some of the thing that's cool about Eugene that there are these kind of people around. Um, they're sort of like the deadheads. You know, there are a lot of these guys. The granola capital of the world. I don't know if anybody knows that. The other thing I might mention is that this is also the grass seed capital of the world, literally. Most of the grass seed that is used to grow all kinds of grasses around the world, actually around the world, is grown right north of here. What kind of grass do I have? Oh, yeah, so... <laughs> you're right. Exactly. <laughs> So I tried to stop with 10, but then people kept on coming to my office and saying, well, what about this and what about that? And I said, okay, well, I'll, 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 get, I'll have an overflow of slides. So um, who knows who, does anybody know who Steve Prefontaine was? This is the guy who drove his car into a rock up on the hill over there. Uh, back in the 70s. He's a great runner. He was an Oregon guy. Um, 
There, there's a there's a track meet called Pre Classic, which is coming up. So there's posters up all over the place. So if you're interested, just look at that. But that's a pretty cool event, and it's out at Hayward Field, which is right over in the university, which is a really cool place. Um, we posted the NC2As and the Olympic trials there a lot, and that's a lot of fun. Um, oh, anybody? Uh, Toby's tofu burritos. I don't know. What more can I say, Lucy? All right. <coughs> Yeah, get the, oh, she says get the sesame sauce. Uh, yeah, Toby. Uh, there's a pretty good music and blues scene for a small place like Eugene. No, oh, yeah, okay, so yeah, you got to stop somewhere because there's real content in Anaga here. Um, all right, so this was a hard list um, to come up with, but uh, anybody who came in from the airport saw Highway 99. I really don't like Highway 99, okay? I, mean, I just don't like it. Um, being the grass seed capital of the, of the world, um, you got to do something with the, the um, stalks of the grass after you harvest the seed. And these guys think it's a good idea to just burn it off so it doesn't rust and kill the next year's crop. But the problem with that is if the wind's blowing to the south, um, Eugene happens to lie south of this and you know a lot of smoke coming down the valley, but that's getting controlled a little bit, but it's still not that nice. Oh, Springfield, yeah. Uh, yeah, has anybody ever seen The Simpsons? <laughs> well, see, Matt Glennon grew up in Springfield, Oregon, which is the town directly east of here that abuts Eugene. And if you want to go see the power, the nuclear power plant, it's down there. It just happens to be called Warehouser. Um, and you can see those three-eyed fish and stuff down there too. It's, it's sort of like a super fun toxic waste site or something. Uh -huh. Whatever. Oh, let's see. Oh yeah, but if you go to Springfield, you might run into Gateway Mall too. Um, how many people went to the Star Wars last night? Did you go to Gateway? So you gotta, you gotta agree. This is like Gateway Mall. It's just like, why would you build such a thing? I don't know. Anyway, unless you need a place to put a movie theater that's not in Eugene, so you don't have to build that Eugene. So that, I guess that's right. Twenty-nine screens. Twenty-nine screens, right? Ferry Street Bridge. Anybody, anybody been over the Ferry Street Bridge? That just, that just sucks. I mean, that's just terrible. Uh, Anybody seen United Airlines in Eugene? <laughs> it's like really bad. I have a lot of experience with this one. Uh, uh, Danabo. Um, this is the little town that's like once you get past all the ugly stuff on Highway 99 coming south towards Eugene, there's a really, really terrible town there. Or it's not actually, it's an unincorporated area, I think. Is that right, Joel? Called Danabo. And it's just so bleak. I, I don't know. I don't like it. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, if you go out to the fairgrounds on any given Saturday, you can either buy flowers or guns, I don't know, or both sometimes, I don't know. And, and there's no waiting period on either of them. Oh, um, how, you know, there, there, was a, there was some kind of mentality, there's some kind of political mentality in Oregon where they don't want to pay for higher education or any education whatsoever, so some idiot uh, had enough, had enough, had enough um, support to pass this thing called Measure 5, which is roughly analogous to Prop 13 in California. How many people know what that was? That was the thing that destroyed the, you know, educational system that took 20 years for it to come back and that sort of stuff. We're, we're, we're sort of just way behind. We're in the process of destroying ours right now. Um, oh, this is the worst thing. There's no good surf within 53 miles. I mean, you know, it's like you got to really drive a long way. And, you know, as Craig pointed out, sometimes it's not so nice at, mi at night. So, you know, that's, that's, that's a bummer. And so, you know, I couldn't come up with anything else. All right, so I got some acknowledgments I want to make. First off, this would never be happening without Joanne Hugie, who's sort of the director of university computing who supported us through all of this effort. Is she around somewhere? Joanne, are you here? Joanne, stand up. Come on. <laughs> Joanne, sort of Joanne's sort of the, sort of the um, she makes all this happen and she supports us and gives us moral support and lets us work as hard as we want. She's great. We all love her. Um, I don't know what else to say about Lucy. Uh, Lucy is a goddess um, and uh, she made all of this happen. Um, when we started doing this and we started seeing that U.S. West wasn't going to help us with anything and the Hilton people weren't really into wiring their own building or anything like that, um, the university, uh, Dale Smith, who's the university uh, wiring guru extraordinaire, 
I came out many, many times with his crew, looked at everything, made sure that we had everything we needed, helped us spec out all the wiring stuff in the building that we needed, tested the T1s, everything. I mean, these guys did a great job. I think they really, how many people from network services are here? I saw some, stand up, you guys did it. Get up, stand up. Um, oh, okay, so Joe, Joe here? Joe? Is Joe here? Lucy? We're all here. He's working. Okay, oh, so Joe is the actually, Lucy actually works for Joe. So when I first said we ought to do Nanog and Eugene, I, 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 had, I talked to Joe and I said, Joe, you're going to have to give up Lucy. And, I, and, he, and he said, okay. And so um, everybody in this crew, this includes um, Joel, Hans, and Lucy. Who else, am I missing anybody? John Miyake. All those guys. Hans, I see that you're here, so you have to stand up. And Joel's here, and Lucy's in the back. Who else? John, is John here? These guys, these are the guys who made all the Ambon stuff work, uh, you know, all the sources, all of that stuff. Wiring, all of that junk. Um, let's see what's next. Oh, Greg. Um, Greg Shepard did um, all of everything that wasn't already done. And Greg, where are you? Get up. Him. Mary Bradley. Uh, Mary Bradley runs all the academic labs, uh, computing labs on U of O campus, and she donated all this equipment that's over there in the terminal room. And she was out here pulling wires around and everything on Saturday and Sunday with her crew and Jeff Hype from the U O. Uh, um, what is it like? What is it? E Shop Lab or they, the shop guys? And so they deserve a big round of applause too. Mary, I didn't see Mary. Mary here? I don't think Mary's here, is she? She'll be here uh, tonight, I hope. Greg Bothan is a physics professor at U of O, but he, I think this might be his, is this his gear? Yeah, he, he's really into this uh, LCD projection stuff, and he donated or let us borrow all of this great uh, projection gear. So I really appreciate that, and I think we should all, you know, it's, very, it's great that we have this and we don't have to print slides or whatever, so that's really great. Um, of course, the Vario guys, Randy and John Heasley have done just a great job. Um, unbelievable. What? Oh, Tom Glover. Sorry, Tom. Thank you, Tom. We had all, this, all these issues with getting hardware out of Cisco. For some reason, we couldn't get that. Uh, they don't have any, I guess. Um, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, they bought it all or something. Uh, they, they got us whatever we needed. He's worked on multicast. Um, it's great. I mean, they were great. It's great working with these guys. I wanted to acknowledge Cisco because they tried to get us some hardware. <laughs> uh, and, and finally, we got most of it out of my basement, so it worked out anyway. Uh, and then the, the other thing is I wanted to try to fit all this on one slide, so I didn't want to go over, but I did want to acknowledge all the students from the local community colleges and K-12s that have been out here uh, working on now. I've just setting things up. A lot of people have been doing this, and there's been a lot, like Craig said, there's been a bunch of enthusiasm, and people have been just really great. So. With that, I think I'm done. Oh, Merritt. I have Merritt on here. Oh, yeah, my slides don't fit on Craig's, on Craig's laptop. I killed mine about five minutes before I was supposed to do it. So I wanted to also thank Merritt because Merritt um, had enough confidence in us to let us bring this here and have all this fun that we're now having. So thank you all of these people for making this happen. I'm done. quickly finish going through. This is uh, the breakdown. Uh, I think there's something about 440 of you here, though it's always kind of hard to count as people come and go and cancel and walk in. By the way, if you were a walk-in registration, uh, you should, no, I won't come on Pam thinks of walking. Please register beforehand if you can. Quick Nanon fact, that how can your company or university host a future Nanon? Well, just send mail to us at Nanon support. 
Uh, we especially had a lot of fun with the universities this time, with the University of Oregon. So if there are other folks from another university who would like to give this a try, please send us mail. Uh, most of the expenses, there are still quite a few expenses, but most are covered by the NAMLOG registration fees. Uh, the responsibility of the local host is really that of the network, which is still non-trivial, but uh, the room and uh, beverages and the catering costs all include in the fees. How can you speak in an anode? Well, again, just send us email, uh, and we have a very, very informal review. Uh, but just send us email, and uh, definitely always taking suggestions from the community. Quickly, I'll go through this a little bit quickly. One of the things we've done recently to cut down on spam is we introduced a list called Nanog Post. To be able to post to the Nanog list, you actually have to be a member of the Nanog-Post list. And it turns out that it's actually the Nanog Post list is actually like a pretty good filter. That there are a number of folks, probably in the audience uh, and others who haven't attended, that we see lots of email going to Nanog that gets bounced because the subscribers aren't on the Nanog Post list. Uh, sometimes we actually forward it on, other times we decided it acts as a pretty good filter. That for folks who don't make it quite through the step of figuring out how to post an anti post, the email usually constitutes a me too or something not spam or so on. So we've left that in place. But if your email is not making it onto the nano list, it's probably because you're not subscribed to nano post. Two last uh, FAQs that we get asked a lot. I can't make it to the meeting. Can I just buy the t shirt? No. <laughs> I really miss Bill's jokes. Can, I, can you please have him tell a few? <laughs> uh, lastly, uh, we have wireless cards. Uh, I think there's still quite a few available for loan. The wireless cards, I think, report, we've had reports of them reaching up to the seventh floor, depending where you are in the hotel and if you're facing the Hurt Center. Uh, I think they're available. I don't know if John's here if he's in the other room. Oh, John's in the back there, wearing the uh, tie-dye t-shirt. So if you want, please uh, talk to John. If you are running wireless and on your laptop, please don't run DHCP. Uh, let us run DHCP. We'll handle it just fine. Thank you. <laughs> Quickly, and I'll get it. If you do have phones, please do put them on silent mode or vibrate mode or whatever. That Yeah, I see everyone checking. Uh, please do go to the mics for questions. And we had a little bit of a problem last time with some of you. Please make sure if you do borrow a wireless card, that you return it at the end. Thank you. And that's all I have for the opening. We'll now go into the first talk by uh, Paul Bixie about buying. I don't see Paul. Paul? Oh, Paul's coming. Oh, one other quick scheduling change. Now, unfortunately, the FBI can't come today. Uh, apparently, there's some big case, something going on. I'm not quite sure what it is. So at the last minute, the FBI did cancel. But instead, I did bring my sunglasses. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe I'll have a few comments and uh, try to substitute for We'll We'll see what I get the thumbs up from Susan. So with that said, we'll just uh, turn over to Paul.